Hello everyone, this is the rationalization of our free quiz on bacteriology. So this, uh, these were the scores of the students who participated in the exam. So as you can see, the highest score was actually 49 and the average score was 31. So this is the first question. The red arrow in the photograph is pointing to a typical arrowhead-shaped zone of hemolysis that is produced in the CAMP test. A beta-hemolytic gram-positive bacillus that produces a rectangular shape area of hemolysis as shown, the, as shown by the blue arrow is. So let's just take a look at the picture first. So this is the picture. So as you can see, this is the CAMP test. When we do the CAMP test, we streak Staphylococcus aureus on blood agar. And on blood agar, Staphylococcus aureus will produce beta hemolysis because of the beta hemolysis that it produces. Then what we do is we streak perpendicularly the unknown organism to uh, Staphylococcus aureus. And we will incubate this, then observe for enhancement of hemolysis. Now, this test is usually used to identify group B streptococcus or streptococcus agalaxiae. Okay? However, aside from streptococcus agalaxiae, another organism can cause a positive CAM test, and that is Listeria monocytogenes. Listeria monocytogenes actually produces a rectangular shaped area of hemolysis instead of the arrowhead pattern associated with group B streptococcus. Okay. Next. This is a catalase positive, coagase negative, gram positive coccus isolated from a urine specimen from a 20 year old female college student. The image shown is a Mueller Hinton plate streaked with 0.5 McFarland standardized inoculum and a 5 microgram disc of novabicin after overnight incubation. What is the identification of the isolate? Now, for us to answer this one, we need to review our algorithm for gram-positive cocci. Okay? Now, as always, we, all, uh, we begin with the gram stain. Okay? If we isolate a gram-positive cocci, the first test that we do is the catalase test. If the catalase is positive, our organism would be Staphylococcus. If it is negative, we are looking at Streptococcus. Okay. Now, what if it's Staphylococcus, like what is mentioned here in the uh, question? So, if we isolate Staph, okay, the next uh, test that we do is your coagulase test. So with the coagulase test, Staphylococcus aureus would be positive, whereas your coagulase negative stuff would, of course, be negative. Now, if you want to differentiate the coagulase negative Staphylococcus, that is when we do your novobiosin susceptibility test. Okay, so novo biasin. With the novo biasin susceptibility test, you'll be able to di differentiate staph epidermidis from staph saprophyticus. Staph epidermidis is susceptible, whereas staph saprophyticus is resistant to novobiosin, right? In the question, this picture was shown. So as you could see, there's actually no zone of inhibition surrounding the antibiotic disc. So this means that the organism is resistant to novobiosin. And as we have mentioned, 
the the coagulase negative staph resistant to novavicin is staph saprophyticus. So the correct answer for this question is letter C, Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Okay, let's go to the next question. Staphylococcus aureus has a distinctive appearance on which one of the following media? The answer is sheep blood agar. Uh, as we have mentioned a while ago, Staphylococcus aureus produces beta hemolysin, okay, which is responsible for the beta hemolysis produced by Staph aureus on sheep blood agar. Modified Tayer Martin is for Neisseria species. TCBS or thiosulfate citrate bile salt agar is for Vibrio. And Lowenstein Jensen is for Mycobacterium. So let's just write that down. Okay, so we need to review our culture media because there are a lot of questions about this culture media. All right. Next question. If a quelang test was done on the following bacterial isolates, which one would you expect to be positive? Of course, for you to be able to answer this, you need to know the purpose of the quelang test. The quelang test is used for uh, identification of the bacterial capsule. And among these organisms, the organism with the capsule is Streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay. Next. A joint fluid was received in the microbiology laboratory. The specimen was cloudy and many neutrophils with intracellular and extracellular gram-negative diplococci were seen on the gram stain. The specimen was inoculated to sheep blood and chocolate agar and grew a small grayish white colony on chocolate with no growth observed on the sheep blood. Which of the following is most likely the organism? Now, uh, this question had an um, accompanying picture, which is as follows. So as you could see, we have gram-negative diplococci found intracellularly as well as extracellularly. And this is characteristic of Neisseria gonorrhea, okay? Which is the only gram-negative diplococci here on the, uh, among the choices, okay? Next. Sputum sample was brought to the laboratory for analysis. Gram stain revealed the following. 10 to 15 epithelial cells per low power field, 8 to 10 WBCs per LPF, and pleomorphic gram-negative rods. Which of the following interpretations should you make? Now, when we are collecting sputum samples, the most important consideration is that we should be, uh, we should be able to collect sputum, not saliva. Okay? So how do we differentiate sputum from saliva? By looking at the epithelial cells as well as the WBCs. Okay? If we have uh, fewer than 25 WBCs, per LPF or low power field, and we have more than 10 epithelial cells, We are, more, uh, we are most likely looking at a sample which is uh, saliva. So if this is saliva, we have to reject the specimen. All right? If the specimen is really sputum, we would expect that there would be many WBCs but less epithelial cells. Okay? The opposite is true for saliva. Okay, so again, the answer here is ask the patient to recollect the sputum sample. Okay, next, Kingella kingei is usually associated with which type of infection? Kingella is part of the Hasek group. Hasek stands for, stands for Haemophilus Aggregatibacter. 
Cardiobacterium. Acanella corodens. And Kingella Kingay. So this is the Hasek group. Oh, next question. The parts of the prototypical bacterium in the image to the right are identified below. Which of the following is incorrectly identified? So this is the accompanying picture to the question. So as you can see, letter A should be pili. Okay, not cytoplasmic membrane. Letter B would be the cell wall. Then letter E would be nuclear material. And letter F would be a flagellum. Okay, letter A is not, uh, is not a cytoplasmic membrane. That's actually pili. Okay, next question. Hemophilus ducreae requires factor X but not factor V. Hemophilus parainfluenzae requires factor V but not factor X. So both statements are actually correct. Now we need to review the uh, factor V and factor X requirements of Haemophilus. Okay? Organisms requiring factor X and factor V include Haemophilus influenzae as well as Haemophilus hemolyticus. Those that do not require factor X but require factor V would include Haemophilus parainfluenzae, and uh, Haemophilus parahemolyticus. Organisms that require factor X but not factor V would include Haemophilus ducreae. Then the organism which do not, uh, do not, does not require both would be it's a prophilus. So in the question, uh, what was mentioned was H of prophilus and H to cray. Ah, sorry. Uh, H para influenzae. So both statements are actually correct. Okay, next. Uh, MRVP broth is inoculated and incubated for 48 hours. What two reagents must be added to determine if the bacterium is VP positive? So B VP is your Vogesproskauer test. Okay. The Vogesproskauer test uh, tests for the ability of the organism to ferment glucose using the neutral pathway. In the neutral pathway, uh, glucose is converted to acetoin. Then through the addition of KOH, particularly 40% KOH, acetoin is converted to diacetyl. And this diacetyl actually reacts with the other agent, which is alpha naphthol. And this produces the positive result, which is a red color. Okay, so the correct answer here is letter D. Next, positive Simon citrate test is seen as a blue color. Now remember in the citrate test, what we are trying to detect is the ability of the organism to utilize citrate as the sole carbon source. Okay. If the organism can utilize citrate as the sole carbon source, the, uh, the breakdown products of citrate will increase the pH of the medium, causing now the indicator bromthymol blue to turn blue. Okay. From green, it becomes blue, which is the positive result in your Simon citrate test. So again, 
the increased pH will cause the bromthymol blue to turn from green into blue. Which of the following is true regarding Ashrikia coli serotype O157H7? So this uh, E. coli serotype O157H7 is actually a HEC or enterohemorrhagic E. coli. This is a known cause of hemolytic uremic syndrome, okay, which is associated with eating uh, hamburgers which have not been properly cooked. Okay. Now, one particular characteristic of E. coli O157H7 that we used to identify the serotype is that it is not able to ferment sorbitol. This is actually the, uh, the principle behind the SMAC plate. Okay? SMAC is sorbitol maconchi. In sorbitol maconchi, the sugar present is sorbitol. If you grow E. coli O157H7 on SMAC, uh, there would be no fermentation, so there would be no color change among the colonies. Okay? Again, O157H7 is a non-fermenter of sorbitol. Next, the attached photograph shows a Christiansen's urea slant four hours after it was inoculated with a gram-negative rod. Which of the following organisms is most likely? So this is the picture. So as you can see, uh, it is a positive urease test. Okay? The, the positive urease test is pink to red. Okay? So the organism which is urease positive among the choices would be Proteus mirabilis. Okay? So other organisms that we need to take note that are urease positive would be Morganella and Providentia. Okay? So Proteus, Morganella, and Providentia. Is our urease positive? Okay, next. All of the following are capnophilic bacteria, which requires 5 to 10% CO2, except, so you have to take note that what is being asked are the ones which are exemptions. Okay, so let's first identify which organisms require CO2. So you have two organisms here that require CO2. You have Haemophilus influenzae and Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, these are capnophilic organisms. The other two, Campylobacter and Helicobacter, are not, cap uh, not capnophilic. Okay, instead, these two organisms are known to be microaerophilic. They require smaller amounts of oxygen. Okay, they are microaerophilic organisms. So the answer here would be one and four. Okay. Next. Appropriate culture media for the recovery of Gardnerella vaginalis. This is your HBT agar. Okay. So again, you need to review the various culture media. Uh, BCYE is for Legionella. CIN or your Cephsuludin ergasa novobicin agar is for your senior. Middlebrook is for mycobacteria. Okay, next. Which of the following tests can differentiate Bacillus anthracis from Bacillus cereus? Okay, one, motility, two, hemolysis and SBA, three, lacitrase production, four, gelat uh, gelatin hydrolysis. Okay, so the answer here would be one, two, and four. So let's just describe Bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus is actually a motile organism. It produces beta hemolysis. And it is actually positive for gelatin hydrolysis. Now if you want to differentiate Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus anthracis is the opposite of the uh, reactions that you see here. Bacillus anthracis would be non-motile, non-hemolytic, and negative for gelatin hydrolysis. Okay, although between these two, Bacillus anthracis is more uh, virulent. Okay? Uh, Bacillus anthracis is the, or your causative agent for anthrax. Bacillus cereus, on the other hand, is known to cause food poisoning.
Next question. Optical, uh, optimal recovery of Francisella tularensis is acquired by okay, letter B, enriched media containing cysteine. Okay? Francisella tularensis requires cysteine for it to grow. Okay? Our mnemonics here is Francisella cysteine. Okay? Next, chemical reagent used as a mordant in Kenyan method for acid fast staining. Remember, your acid fast staining has two modifications. You have your Kenyan method and your Zil Nielsen. Your Kenyan is your cold method. Your Zil Nielsen is the hot method. The difference between the two would be the uh, mordant used. Okay? For Kenyan or the cold method, we use Tergitol. For Zil Nielsen, we use heat as the mordant. Okay. Next, each of the following tests detects the production of mixed acids as a result of glucose fermentation. So going back, uh, a while ago we discussed Servojespers Cower, which uh, uh, detects if the organism ferments through the neutral pathway. Another pathway for glucose fermentation would actually be your mixed acids pathway or your acidic pathway. So in this pathway, glucose is converted to mixed acids like lactic acid, cetic acid, formic acid, or succinic acid. As a result, the medium becomes uh, more acidic okay, and this causes a positive methyl red test okay again please remember for the neutral test or sorry for the neutral pathway the test would be your bojas proskauer okay so the your methyl red and bojas proskauer actually work hand in hand for you to identify which pathway of glucose fermentation is being used by the organism okay now remember, all enterobacteria are, are glucose fermenters. So they have to choose between these two pathways okay, on how they would ferment glucose. Okay? So all enterobacteria would either be MR or VP positive. But they can never be positive for both since they have to choose only between these two pathways on how they would ferment glucose. It is also not possible for us to get a member of enterobacteria C which is negative for both. Since again, remember, all enterobacteria C are glucose fermenters. Okay, so it's either one of these two. Either the organism is MR positive or VP positive for enterobacteria C. Now, if this is if both tests are negative, you have to consider that the organism might not be a glucose fermenter. And it might not be a member of Enterobacteria C. Okay, next. Oxidase negative, gram negative bacillus that produces an alkaline slant. So, alkaline slant, acid butt on TSI is able to ferment which of the following carbohydrates. Now, let us discuss your. TSI agar or your triple sugar iron agar. So your TSI agar is actually a slant and, a slant and butt agar. So there's a slant and there's the butt. Okay. The slant and the butt actually serve as two separate chambers. The slant is aerobic whereas the butt is anaerobic okay now because of these two different conditions they also have two different reactions in your anaerobic chamber or your butt what happens is fermentation whereas here in the aerobic uh, slant it is more of oxidation. Okay? And since you have two different reactions, you also have two different products. Here in the slant, you produce alkaline products, whereas in the butt, you produce acidic products. 
okay, from fermentation. Now, in the TSI, the three sugars present are glucose, lactose, and sucrose. And these are found in a ratio of 1 is to 10 is to 10. Okay? So as you could see, glucose has a lesser amount. If the organism can ferment glucose, the acid from glucose fermentation will turn the butt yellow. Okay? Because of the uh, phenol red, which turns uh, red to yellow in acidic conditions. If the organism can also ferment lactose and sucrose aside from glucose, you will have more acid enough to convert the butt as well as the slant into a yellow color. Okay? So again, if it is only glucose being fermented, that's just enough for the butt. But if lactose and sucrose are also being fermented, the acid will be enough to convert the slant as well into a yellow color. Okay? So if you, are, if you have an organism which is K over A or alkaline over acid, this means that you're only fermenting glucose. But if you have an organism which is A over A or acid over acid, you have an organism which is fermenting glucose as well as lactose and or sucrose. Okay? Aside from that, the TSI can also detect H2S production through the appearance of a black precipitate as well as gas production. Okay. Next question. Beta hemolytic catalase negative gram positive cocos is found to be heat rate hydrolysis positive and resistant to bacitracine. Which of the following is a likely presumptive identification? So a while ago, we were discussing your gram positive cocos and its algorithm okay, for identification of organisms. So the first test that we do is usually the catalyst, if it is negative, we're looking at strep. If it is positive, again, we're looking at stuff. Okay. Now, if the organism is strep, the next thing that we do is look at your hemolytic pattern. We identify if it is alpha, beta, or gamma hemolytic. If your organism is beta hemolytic or it produces complete hemolysis, you have to consider that this could be group A or group B strep, or strep pyogenes or strep agalactiae, respectively. Now, how do we differentiate group A from group B? Okay. One test that we could do is your bacitracine susceptibility. In your bacitracine susceptibility, Group A would be susceptible, whereas group B would be resistant. Okay? Aside from that, please remember that your group B is camp positive as well as hyperate hydrolysis positive. Okay? Next. Which of the following non-photochromogen slow grower mycobacterial species will be ruled out if niacin is negative? Okay, the answer is MTB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Remember that one of the defining characteristics of MTB is that it is niacin positive. Okay, it is niacin positive, MTB. Okay, next. Test to differentiate streptococcus, pneumonia, and viridans strep. So, uh, a lot of students got this incorrectly, actually. The answer here would be all. Okay? You can also use Taxo A, also known as Bacitracine, to differentiate strep pneumonia from viridans strep. Okay? Strep pneumonia is actually uh, susceptible to both Taxo A and Taxo P. Okay. Taxo A is again basitracine, taxo P is optochin. What is the appearance of salmonella and salmonella shigella agar? 
The answer will be colorless with black centers. Okay? The key biochemical characteristic that we use to differentiate Salmonella from Shigella would be H2S production. Okay? H2S production. Salmonella is H2S positive. So it would produce black centers on Salmonella Shigella agar. Shigella, on the other hand, will produce colorless colonies without black centers it's, since it is H2S negative. Okay, next question. Uh, the colonies growing on the blood agar plate, as shown in the upper image, are gray, white, and swarming. Note in the image below that the colonies growing on XLD agar have black centers with pigmentation that does not extend into the agar. A presumptive identification of protein species can be made. Select the biochemical reaction that serves to separate proteus vulgaris from proteus mirabilis. So this is your indole test. Okay? In the indole test, proteus vulgaris is positive. Okay? So this is the accompanying picture actually. But the only question is actually this one. What test is used to identify or to differentiate proteus vulgaris from proteus mirabilis? Okay, let's just discuss the indole test briefly. In the indole test, the enzyme that we are trying to look for is tryptophanase. If the organism can produce the enzyme tryptophanase, it will convert tryptophan to indole. Indole will react with para dimethyl amino benzaldehyde para dimethyl amino benzaldehyde which is actually early reagent and this will produce a positive result of a red color okay so that's the indole test okay, next question colonies are small to medium sized opaque shiny non hemolytic pale beige or yellowish color has a gliding motility. So let's encircle that. May be observed as outgrowths from the colonies or as a haze on the surface of the agar. What bacteria is being described? So the clue here is gliding motility and that would be capnocytophaga. Okay, capnocytophaga is known to have gliding motility. Okay, next. Organism that can live and grow in reduced concentrations of oxygen but prefers an anaerobic environment is known as an or a. Okay, this would be aerotolerant anaerobes. So aerotolerant anaerobes are actually anaerobic. Okay, but if they're exposed to small amounts of oxygen, they would still be able to grow. Okay, unlike the obligate anaerobes, which strictly should not be exposed to oxygen. Okay? This is uh, in contrast to microaerophilic organisms. When you say microaerophilic, they require oxygen, but in small amounts. Okay? Microphilic organisms are aerobic, whereas aerotolerant anaerobes are anaerobic. Okay? They are really anaerobic, but they can survive if there uh, if there is small amounts of if there are small amounts of oxygen. Okay, next question: Gram positive bacillus was isolated from a wound, in, wound specimen and had the following characteristics: double zone of beta hemolysis, lecithinase positive, lipase negative, indole negative. What is the most likely identification of this organism? Uh, actually, what gave this away would be the double zone of beta hemolysis. Okay, and there's only one organism to think about if you see this in the question, and that's Clostridium perfringens. Okay, just take note of the other biochemical uh, characteristics of Clostridium perfringens. Okay, next. Gram negative, oxidase negative coccobacillus was isolated from a patient CSF. Organism produced dark pink colonies on McConkie and had the following biochemical results. So A over A on TSI, H2S negative. Uh, maybe there's gas. Uh, by the way, there's gas production also. Then indole positive. 
motile, urease uh, negative, and citrate negative. The most probable identity of the organism would be E. coli. Okay? So now, if you see A over A on TSI, we know that the organism ferments glucose as well as it also ferments lactose and or sucrose. Okay? If you see an A over A TSI, you should be thinking of your eke. This would be Escherichia coli, Klebsiella, and Enterobacter. These are your rapid lactose fermenters. And they are the ones known to produce A over E on your TSI. So we can eliminate Serasia marcescens. Now, how do you differentiate your eke? You look at the indole test. Okay? Among your eke, the organism which is indole positive would be Escherichia coli. The others are uh, negative in your indole. Okay? So if we make a table okay, of your invict tests, E. coli would be positive, positive, negative, negative. Klebsiella and Enterobacter would be negative, negative, positive, positive. Of course, there's an exemption. Among your Klebsiella, Klebsiella oxytoka is indole positive. Okay? So that's how you differentiate Klebsiella oxytoka from the other Klebsiella. Okay? It is indole positive. Okay, next. Uh, primary virulence factor produced by streptococcus pneumoniae that prevents phagocytosis. This is the capsule. Okay? The other organisms which produce, uh, produce a capsule also have the ability to prevent phagocytosis. Okay, next question. Gram-negative diplococcus is isolated from a throat culture. The isolate grows on Thayer Martin agar and produces acid from maltose, lactose, and glucose and is ONPG positive. What is the most likely identification of this isolate? So what is being described here actually would be your CTA. Okay, cysteine triptychase agar. All right. Now CTA can be incorporated with various sugars, which include glucose, maltose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay, and you can actually differentiate your various Neisseria species through your CTA. Neisseria gonorrhea produces acid in the tube with glucose, but not with the other tubes. This is easy to remember since Neisseria gonorrhea, letter G, then glucose, letter G. Neisseria meningitis produces acid from glucose as well as from uh, maltose, but not from lactose and sucrose. Neisseria lactamica produces acid from glucose and maltose as well as lactose, but not from sucrose. Then Neisseria sica okay, produces acid from glucose, maltose, not lactose, and sucrose. Okay. Neisseria elongata is negative for all, all of this, as well as Moraxella catarhalis, okay, negative for all of these tubes. Okay. So the answer here would be Neisseria lactamica. Okay, next question. We have here quite a long question, okay? But the clue here would be this one. Long, slender, fusiform, gram-negative bacilli with tapered ends. Okay, there's only one organism being described constantly having this characteristic, and that's Fusobacterium nucleatum. Okay? Fusobacterium nucleatum is a bacilli with tapered ends. Okay? Uh, Fusobacterium nucleatum is a commensal in the upper respiratory tract. However, it, is, it has been associated with hospital-acquired pneumonia, lung abscesses, and empyema. Okay, so this is the picture actually. So as you can see, you have here bacilli with tapered ends. 
Only oxidase positive member of enterobacter say this is plesiomonas. Okay. Now, uh, the general characteristics of enterobacter say are as follows. Enterobacter say are all glucose fermenters, and supposedly all of them are oxidase negative. Most of them reduce nitrate to nitrite. Okay, and they are catalase positive. Okay. However, there's an exception. Plesiomonas okay, is oxidase positive. Okay, next question. What step in the gram stain distinguishes between gram positive and gram negative organisms? So this is your uh, decolorization okay, using acetone alcohol. After the addition of your mordant in the gram stain, the primary stain, which is your crystal violet, would, uh, would be locked in the gram-positive cell wall. Since the gram-positive cell wall is thick and it contains stachoic acid. Okay? In the decolorization step, the crystal violet would be removed in the gram-negative cell wall, but it, uh, the crystal violet will remain in the gram-positive cell wall. Next. Which type of enrichment media is used to isolate group E steps? So this is your Todd Hewitt broth. Okay. Complete clearing of media around bacterial colonies in a blood agar plate is referred to as beta hemolysis. Okay, so your alpha hemolysis, remember, is incomplete hemolysis. Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis. Gamma is no hemolysis. Whereas delta hemolysis is not used to describe any type of uh, hemolysis. Okay. Uh, one, one useful mnemonic here is that alpha okay, sounds like almost. Okay, so incomplete hemolysis. Beta is best. Gamma is garbage. All right. Okay, next question. When an erythromycin resistant and clindamycin susceptible staphylococcal isolate is encountered, a D zone test for inducible clindamycin resistance must be performed before clindamycin is reported to be susceptible. Following overnight incubation, flattening of the clindamycin zone between the two discs heard. This is reported as what? Okay, let's discuss your D zone test. So the, the D zone test is done. If it is demonstrated that the organism is erythromycin resistant, but clindamycin susceptible. Okay. So what we do is we incubate erythromycin with clindamycin uh, near to each other. So what would happen is that, let's just draw something bigger. What would happen is that in the interface between the erythromycin and the clindamycin disc, we would see that there would be a flattening of the zone of inhibition surrounding clindamycin. Okay, remember, uh, the, or, the organism was thought of as clindamycin susceptible initially. Okay, but if you incubate these two discs nearby each other, what happens is that the organisms you have here in the interface between erythromycin and clindamycin would have induced or inducible clindamycin resistance. Okay? So the organisms here, the organisms here at the opposite side are still susceptible. But here on the interface, there was inducible clindamycin resistance. Okay, so there was blunting or flattening of the clindamycin uh, zone of inhibition. Okay, now in that case, 
you will have to report that the organism is resistant to both erythromycin and kindamycin. And for the case of kindamycin, the resistance is called inducible. Okay? Next question. Interbacteria say are typically gram negative and uh, we have discussed this a while ago. Capable of reducing nitrates and nitrite. Letter A is incorrect since they are all glucose fermenters. Letter C is incorrect since they are all catalase positive and uh, letter D is incorrect because generally they are oxidase negative. Okay, next, which Escherichia coli produces a heat labile enterotoxin and a heat stable enterotoxin? So this is obvious. Okay, enterotoxin. The, or, the serotype which produces enterotoxin is your ETEC or your enterotoxigenic E. coli. Okay. Bile salts and crystal violet are incorporated into Maconky agar in order to, letter C, inhibit the growth of gram-positive organisms. Bile salts and crystal violet are both inhibitors okay, in the Maconky agar. Okay. Characteristic colony morphology of Actinomyces israeli on solid agar resembles molar tooth. Okay, So that's the characteristic appearance of Actinomyces israeli, israeli colonies. Your Bacillus anthracis is the one which is uh, known to produce medusa head colonies. Your fried egg appearance would be seen among your Mycoplasma hominis. Let's just write that down. Okay. Next. Suspected isolate of Vibria species is isolated from a young child with diarrhea. Organism is identified as a curved gram-negative rod, oxidase, lactose, and sucrose positive that produces yellow colonies on TCBS. The organism is most likely, this is Vibrio cholerae. This is the only species of Vibrio which produces yellow colonies on TCBS. The others here produce green colonies. Okay? They produce green colonies on TCBS. Okay. All of the following have been used to describe colonies of Streptobacillus monoliformis except mercury drops. Okay. Your Streptobacillus monoliformis colonies have been described to be like fluff, bo uh, fluff balls, breadcrumbs, or fried egg. The mercury drop drops colonies are used uh, are associated with your bordetella. Okay. An organism grows on blood agar at room temp and nutrient agar at 35 degrees Celsius. The organism does not oxidize lactose, maltose, and glucose. It's nitrate positive and DNA is positive. Okay. This organism is. Now remember, you only have three organisms which are DNA is positive. These are your SMS. Staphylococcus aureus, Moraxella catarhalis, and Seracia marcescens. Now, what was described is an organism that does not oxidize lactose, maltose, and glucose and is nitrate positive. So, among the choices, the only organism that, that is DNA is positive would be Moraxella. Catarhalis. Causes right rat bite fever with Sudoku. This is Spirillum minus. Illustrated in the left tube of this photograph is a positive Vojaspor scour. The red pigment is produced from that. So a lot of students actually got this incorrectly. Okay. Although what we know is that alpha naphtol and 40% KH reacts with acetoin, the complete reaction is that acetoin is actually converted first to diacetyl okay, before it reacts with alpha naphtol. 
And to make this possible, you need the 40% KOH. Okay? So it is actually diacetyl which reacts with alpha naphtol, not acetoin itself. Okay? So this is the positive Vojaspas cover on the left tube. Ethanol shock procedure, please remember this one. This is used to identify or to differentiate to stridium and bacteroides. Cetacosis is a lower respiratory tract infection in humans caused by contact with what? Animal. So this would be birds. Okay. And the causative agent of cetacosis would be chlamydophila. Sitaki. Okay. Which is uh, transmitted by birds. Sitakosis is also known as your parrot fever. Or ornithosis. Characteristic odor resembles chocolate cake. This is Proteus vulgaris. Okay? Chocolate cake or burnt chocolate. Okay? That's Proteus vulgaris. Okay? Last question. Distinctly large spreading mucoid colony seen in blood agar in the upper left image and the display of lactose fermentation in the upper right image provide for a presumptive organism identification. This species is most commonly recovered from respiratory specimens of patients with pneumonia. Serving absence of motility, a weak uh, reaction for urea, and strong reactions for citrate and vegetable scour confirm the presumptive identification. So from the multiple choices, select the name of the isolate. This is the picture. So as you can see, the colonies are mucoid. And if you have mucoid colonies, okay, that's a clue that the organism could be uh, could have a capsule. Okay? So, aside from that, the organism was described to be non-motil, okay, weak uh, reaction for urea, and citrate positive, Vogespascar positive. These are characteristics of Klebschella pneumoniae. Okay? Now, you need to remember that you only have three members of Enterobacteria say, which are non-motil. These are your Shigella, Klebschella, and your Sinia Enterocolitica at 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the mnemonics for non-motil Enterobacteria say, would be Sky. Okay? So from that alone, you will now be able to answer this question. Then you have... Uh, it was also described that the organism was mucoid. So among this, the only organism which has a capsule would be your Klebschella. Okay, so that's the last item. So let's take a look at the top 10, okay, for this exam. So these are the top 10, okay. So the f at ninth place, 9.5 place, there are two students. You have Mr. Lopez Fernando and Miss Diana Bautista. At rank 7.5, Ms. Tiffany Cabildo and Mr. Leonardo Buenaventura. At 5.5, Mr. Vic Busi and Cesar Angue. 3.5, Kiran Umangay and Christian Neil Figueres. Rank 2, Trisha Ison. And rank 1, Bergonio Dean. Okay, congratulations everyone. Uh, keep it up. And I hope this serves as inspiration for you. Okay. So that's it for our bacteriology exam. Thank you for taking this exam and we hope that you can join us in the other examinations. Okay. Thank you.